good morning students today we start the topic floral evocation integrating environmental cues plants are sessile organisms therefore they must continually adapt their growth and development to the external environment unlike animals in which most development is completed during embryogenesis plant development continues throughout the life cycle indeed there is no particular developmental outcome that is predetermined since development will unfold in response to a whole host of environmental factors such as day length temperature competition from other plants nutrient availability and interactions with animals plants can therefore be thought of as ideal systems for understanding how organisms perceive the case in which flowering occurs strictly in response to internal development factors independently of any particular environment conditions is referred to as autonomous regulation in species which exhibit an absolute requirement for specific set of environmental in order to flower flowering is considered to be an obligate or quantitative response if flowering is promoted by certain environmental cues but will eventually occurring in the absence of such conditions the flowering response is facultative or quantitative a species with a facultative flowering response such as arabidopsis relies on both environmental and autonomous signals to promote reproductive growth photoperiodism and vernalization are two of the most important mechanism underlying seasonal responses photoperiodism is a response to the length of day or night vernalization is the promotion of flowering by prolonged cold temperature other signals such as light quality ambient temperature and abiotic stresses are also important external conditions for plant development the shoot apex and phase changes as multicellular organisms pass through a series of more or less defined developmental stages each with its characteristic features in humans infancy childhood adolescence and adulthood represent four general stages of development with puberty as the dividing line between the non reproductive and the reproductive phases similarly plant pass through distinct developmental phases the limiting the timing of these transitions often depends on environmental conditions allowing plants to adapt to a changing environment this is possible because plants continuously produce new organs from the shoot apical meristems primordia start as small bumps of cell on the flanks of the shoot apex and depending on the interactions between the signals they receive from the environment and the plant genetic program 
these primordia may give rise to leaves or flowers in this way plant growth can be thought of as modular process whereby the architecture and form of the plant will depend on how the successive primordia are specified along the stem each primordium leads to the production of a phytoma a basic repeating unit consisting of a vegetative section and a meristem section in the case of the leaf the vegetative section accounts for nearly all the cells whereas in many flowers the meristem section is large and often subsumes the vegetative regions this simple repeating unit is enormously flexible and is common to plants as diverse as daisies and oaks the transition between different phases are tightly developmentally regulated since the plant must integrate information from the environment as well as endogenous signals to maximize its reproductive fitness the following sections describe the major pathways that control the flowering plant development has three phases post embryonic development in plants can be divided into three phases first is juvenile phase second is adult vegetative phase and third is adult reproductive phase the transition from one phase to another phase is called phase change the primary distinction between the juvenile and the adult vegetative phase is that the latter has the ability to form reproductive structures flowering in angiosperms cones in gymnosperms however flowering which reproduce, represents the expression of the reproductive competence of the adult phase often depends on some specific environmental and developmental signals thus the absence of flowering itself is not a reliable indicator of juvenility the transition from juvenile to adult is frequently accompanied by changes in vegetative characteristics such as leaf morphology phyllotaxy thorniness rooting capacity and leaf retention in deciduous plants such as english ivy hedera halix such changes are most evident in woody perennials but they are apparent in many herbaceous species as well unlike the abrupt transition from the adult vegetative phase to the reproductive phase the transition from juvenile to vegetative adult is usually gradual involving intermediate forms for plant growth like juvenile phase turns into adult vegetative phase in which plant grows uh, in form of stems and leaves and then it turns uh, into a uh, adult reproductive phase whereas in an adult reproductive phase plant shows flowering and 
it produces seeds by the flowers so it's completed thank you students